Welcome to Talk Time. We're glad that you have joined us this month. And today we are going to be talking about Blackbeard the Pirate, North Carolina's most infamous pirate. Um, many of you know that Blackbeard, he sailed the coast of North Carolina. He terrorized the coast of North Carolina. So we're going to just learn a few facts about him today. And if you have our kit that you picked up, you'll be able to complete the kit when at your leisure. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share a screen with you today. Let's see here. Give me just a second. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead. Um, as you can see, we are talking about Blackbeard, and we're going to start with Ahoy, hearties. And I'm not sure if you know what that means, but it means hello, friends. So let's go ahead and let's get learning. So, wow, did Blackbeard's mom really name him Blackbeard? Actually, Blackbeard is his nickname. And how did he get the nickname? He is believed that he gave it himself because he wanted to have the worst reputation there possibly could be while selling the seed. That way, people would actually give him items off of their ship or either um, just go ahead and give in so that he really would not have to go into battle because Blackbeard would actually take the chance of getting hurt himself. So he wanted to look fierce to everyone. He wanted his name to st sound fierce. So he gave himself the nickname Blackbeard. So let's go ahead and look at the picture and see how he would get the nickname Blackbeard. If you look at our drawing today, you can see that Blackbeard has a black beard. It's long. Um, his hair was black also, and it was a little long too. But however, Blackbeard would take him when he got ready to go into battle and braid his beard, and then it put red ribbons throughout the bottom of his beard. Not only did he do that, but Blackbeard would take the rope that was used to light the cannon off and he would paste, place a piece of it underneath of his hat. And you can actually see it in our PowerPoint, the smoke. And then he would light each end of the rope to give him a smoky appearance. And of course, Blackbeard, he carried the pistols across his chest. He carried daggers and he also carried a cutlass. So daggers, they are a form of a knife, and a cutlass is a short sword. It's a sword, but it's short, and it's not as long. And that was the preferred weapon of a pirate, because if they were fighting battle on ship, the sh cutlass was less likely to get tangled up in the ropes that held the sails than what a actual sword was, which was much longer. So what was Blackbeard's real name? Um, there's several possibilities. Historians have looked for years or researched for years to see if they could discover. Um, as you can see, we have a couple of possibilities. Edward Teach, Edward Thatch, Edward Tatch, Edward Tat, Edward Thatch. It's just spelled different ways, but have you, it's kind of unique because they all rhyme. So why become a pirate? There was a war, it was called the Queen Anne's War, um, basically from 1702 to 1703, and England was fighting against Spain and France. So what they would do, they would, um, the, in order to support England's navy, they would um, enlist ships into privateers. And you had to have a letter from the king or from the government that was giving you permission to sell by the government and attack the en enemy. So for England, the enemy would be Spain and France. And as long as you had one of these letters, you were considered a privateer. And the privateers, they could attack the ships, they could take all the goods off of the ship, and they would only have to give their government a portion of what they took. And after the war ended, 
the pirates just returned to normal selling of shipping goods from point A to point B. But guess what? They did not find the life exciting at all. So what would they do? They just became pirates. So Blackbeard, he did, he is believed that he did serve as a privateer. Um, he actually became um, a pirate and he served under Captain Benjamin Hornigal. And in November 17, November 17, 1717, they camp captured the French ship Le Concord, and Captain Hornigo and Blackbeard were still partners. Well, Blackbeard talked Captain Hornigo into giving him the Lord the Le Concord to become the captain of. When the ship was given to Blackbeard, he renamed Le Concord the Queen Anne's Revenge. And he outfitted the Concord completely. He had approximately 40 guns, cannons. Um, he was staffed with many men. And um, he severed his ties with Captain Hornigo. And in fact, Captain Hornigo decided to accept a pardon from the king. And he decided to live life on land and not continue to be a pirate. However, um, so Blackbeard selling this um, seas with the Queen Anne's Revenge and with him um, co constantly attacking ships, he actually increased his fleet of ships. That means he had more ships under his command than just the Queen Anne's Revenge. So actually Blackbeard was not only a captain of a ship, but he was the Commodore. That means he was in charge of many ships. One of the ships they did capture was the Revenge, which belonged to um, Stead Bonnet. And Stead Bonnet was a pirate, and he's known as the Gentleman Pirate. So um, Blackbeard, he became North Carolina's most infamous pirate. He was a, he had a fierce reputation, and not only from fighting, but from his appearance, as we kind of talked about earlier. And one of his biggest moves he made was when he took all of his ships and he um, blockaded the port of Charlestown, South Carolina, which Charlestown today we know as Charleston. And in that blockade, he wanted medicine and he demanded medicine. So ships were being attacked as they were leaving Charleston or Charlestown, and they were being attacked as they came in. Well, Blackbeard, in order to get his, his chest of medicine he wanted for his men, he um, blockaded the um, fort and he took hostages. And once he received his chest of medicine, he released his hostages. So no one lost their life during this but he was just a terror because it was actually hurting um, the port because they could not get their goods out of the port and they could not get goods in that they needed at the time. So after Blackbeard left Charleston, he ran his ship aground um, at near Topsail Beach in here in North Carolina, off the coast of North Carolina in the Atlantic Ocean. So he abandoned the Queen Anne's Revenge and they traveled on to Bath. Well, uh, Blackbeard decided to, again, to accept the, the pardon from King George I of England through Governor Charles Eden, who was managing the colony at the time. After living a little bit of his life on land, Blackbeard decided it just was not what he thought it would be. It was not exciting. So Captain, um, Blackbeard, he started selling the seas again. And it was Governor Spotswood of Virginia that ordered Blackbeard captured. And Lieutenant Maynard located Blackbeard off the coast of North Carolina, November the 22nd, 1718. And there was a battle. And in fact, um, Blackbeard thought there were not as many men on Lieutenant Maynard's ship because he hid some of his men below deck. And when Blackbeard and his men crossed over to Lieutenant Maynard's ship, guess what? Everybody just started coming out from below deck. And Blackbeard was actually killed during this battle. 
and his head was um, severed and it was placed on the bow of the ship and they sailed back to Virginia. And basically with the death of Blackbeard, it, 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 was, to, it was towards the end of the golden age of piracy. So um, thanks to the Queen Anne's Revenge, many people have searched for it over the years, but in I think, 95 or 96, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Mike Daniel, he had a team and they were looking for Blackbeard. And they recovered a bell by, during this time frame. And he donated it or he turned it over to the state of North Carolina. From there, the state of North Carolina um, has been diving on the site. At first, it was what we thought to be Blackbeard's pirate ship. But after years of diving, recovering artifacts that have been conserved, it is determined it was Blackbeard's pirate ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. And today at the museum, um, once we open back up to the public, we have a few of the artifacts on display. So as you can see, looking at the picture, we do have a cannon from Blackbeard's pirate ship that has been um, conserved and we have it on display and we also have a case that has some artifacts from the um, site too as you can see there's a plate um, there's a plug that would have been used to um, plug the end of a cannon and then we also have the swab that would have been used to clean the cannon out in preparation for the next one next battle and then there we just have some more miscellaneous pieces um, a needle we have um, some gold dust that would have come from the site too but all of these artifacts they are taken back to a lab at east carolina university where they work to conserve the artifacts that have been in the atlantic ocean for years and years and years and years and so that they can make them available for the public to see. So thank goodness that we have our archeology span department with the, North Carolina, with the state of North Carolina that help preserve history so that you can see history when you visit a museum. So um, we're gonna go ahead today. So let's go ahead one more chat slide because I think the next slide will be our activity today. So um, if you stop by the museum and if you picked up one of the packets, you received a blue sheet of paper and then you received a little baggie. Well, in the little baggie, we have created a crossword puzzle for you to complete. And um, so it asks about what did, uh, what did pirates use to attack another ship? How did pirates identify their ship, which was by a what pirate flag? And so there's just some simple pirate questions up there. And of course, we did place an answer sheet in there for you so you can complete that, hopefully complete the crossword puzzle. We also have, of course, we talked about the appearance of Blackbeard and included would be like a most wanted poster. So you can take and create Blackbeard on your poster because he had what? A long black beard. You saw that he wore a hat. Um, he could tie ribbons, braid his beard, and he tied red ribbons. So you can actually draw your version of Blackbeard. Then we've also included two coloring sheets for you to complete later on too if you have the packet. So let's get started with our ship. Of course, today our ships are made a little bit, well, we still have ships, wooden ships, wooden sailing ships, but um, most of us today have fiberglass boats or we have our, our Navy boats are made quite differently from when Black built beer sailed. So um, if you look in your packet, you're gonna find your wooden boat. And for the one that you see in the picture, we actually took and drew lines on the wooden boat and we, to make it look like planks 
um, the, where the boat was built together. And you can do that if you have a marker, but you're gonna glue the wooden boat onto the blue piece of paper that you have. So you would just glue it at the bottom of your blue piece of paper. Then you're going to have, let me adjust the screen just a little bit. Then you're gonna have popsicle sticks. The popsicle sticks are going to become the mast of your sailing vessel or your um, pirate ship. The mast are made of wood. And what do the masts do? They hold the sails up. So we're going to glue two popsicle sticks, um, one on top of the other. And then we're going to have the shorter popsicle stick over here. So you would glue those on. Then, of course, we have cells, and you can see the cells in the um, picture that we have up here for you. But there's, how many cells do we have? We have one, two, three, four. So we have four different size cells. And you're just gonna take a little bit of glue, and you're gonna glue your two larger cells on the, pops, the two popsicle sticks that represent the mass. And then your two smaller cells, you would just glue on your shorter popsicle stick. Then in your packet, we have also included some foam pieces. So if you have the packet, you may have a square, you may have a circle, you may have an oval like I have right here, but you're, just going to take and glue your ovals across the wooden ship. One, two, three. And they're going to represent the cannons on your pirate ship. Because, of course, how many cannons did Blackbeard have on his, on the Queen Anne's Revenge? He had 40 cannons on his ship. And then in your packet, we do have some foam stickers again and of sea life, because if you're out in the sea, what are you gonna see? You might see a whale, you are gonna see some fish, some dolphins, you might even see just a variety of wildlife or sea life in the ocean. So again, we hope that you have enjoyed our program. We hope that you have learned something about Blackbeard, that um, he was, what, he was fierce and he looked fierce and he wanted to be, appear fierce to everyone so that you would just give him whatever, they would, ships would just give him whatever he had. And just remember that um, he did run the Queen Anne's of Revenge aground off the coast of North Carolina and the state of North Carolina and their archaeology department and the um, East Carolina University, they are, um, they house the artifacts and they share them with the museums here. So the next time when the museum opens back up, um, please stop by and see us and you can take a look at the cannon that we have on display and some of the smaller artifacts that were located on the site. So I'm going to end our PowerPoint. I hope you have enjoyed the program today. Next month, we are going to talk about Betsy Dowdy and her ride on a horse. Um, from basically Curry Tuck County all the way to Perquimans County. So we hope you will join us. Um, the reason why we picked Betsy Daly is because it is Constitution, the month of September is Constitution Month. So um, we will see you next month and hope you enjoyed the program on Blackbeard. Have a great day.